What's up guys, my name is LeftFordF53 and today I am back here with a brand new video, Depression Quest. Um, I don't know if you guys want me to continue the series, but I think we're almost done. I'm not sure, I don't know how many chapters or pages there are left, but... Well, there's not really chapters, but whatever. We just had called Alex to um, inform her about our problems. So let's get right back into telling her about our problems. Okay. You doll Alex, who picks up after only two rings. You ask if she's ha if she's has time to talk, and she tells you she she's just around in her PJs and is actually somewhat bored. For once, due to being caught up on homework or coursework, you try to figure out where to start with how you're feeling and and are overcome with missing her face. You ask if she's if she feels like grabbing some dinner, and you notice her barely contained surprise and delight on the other end of the line. You meet about half an hour later. At hold on, I gotta turn down this. Uh, audio okay just give me a second um no i don't i'm not disable sound never mind okay mouse pesky mouse get off screen actually it has to be on screen sorry um you meet about half an hour later at an ex inexpensive di diner not far from your apartment while the food is not great you're surprised by how much you your mood seems to have elevated just being in her company while at first you were extremely hesitant to talk about your job situation for fear of being burdensome of or sounding like a whiner you see her listening intently to you with what you've been wh with what even to you seems to be genuine concern after widening Winding down with a beer, you continuously open up a little bit more and about your feelings surrounding your job and how drained it leaves you. You feel you feeling how you le it leaves you feeling how you feel like your simply exist your simple existence existing selling days uh, of your life for no real purpose. You surprise even yourself. When you start talking about how frustrated and stimid you feel about your job, about how you used to be, to feel passionate, passionately about things, but feel like all your energy and capacity for creative creativity is getting leached out of you each and every workday. Let me scroll down a little bit, or right here. Uh, you can't remember how long it's been since you've externalized this much raw emotion. The two of you spent several hours in in the that diner booth. Long after your half-eaten food was cleared and the waitress stopped refilling your coffee cups, as you get up to leave, a sudden wave of self-consciousness weight washes over you, and you suddenly feel incredibly awkward. Then Alex stands up. And grabs you tightly around her waist. It tightly around your waist. You realize that, short of that, short of being, or short of boring her with your seemingless endless rants, she simply she's simply happy to have gotten a chance to spend time. Your real, your time. You real time with you it's been by all accounts incredibly too long since you've allowed yourself to open up to them like this to them again who is them us like me her that kind of thing whatever like this and there's an almost palpable feeling of cl closeness you allow just uh, you allow yourself to hold on to as you go to bed that night. Hmm. So far we are, you are depressed, interaction is exhausting and you are becoming more and more withdrawn. You are seeing a therapist even though you doubt anything she says, 
could make you feel better. You are not currently taking medication for depression. That's good. Did we actually get here? I don't remember. It's an utterly nondescript Wednesday afternoon. The type of afternoon that would completely fade from memory unless you made an active effort to persevere it. As, as has become routine on Wednesdays, you are sitting on the couch in Dr. Melville's Dr. Mel's, we're just going to call him or her Dr. Mel, Dr. Mel's office. To your mild surprise, she begins t this session by breaking her characteristic therapist therapist's silence and begins speaking up right away. I wanted to start by saying I think it's great that you decided to come to see me. It's, um, it's an incredible, important first step, she begins. Jesus, um, I wanted to take some time today to talk to you about the possibility of supp supplementing or substituting your treatment with medication. The medication of the mention of medication makes your ears perk and and you perk up and feel and you feel your heart rate increasing. She continues. Well, shit. Um. I must be really fucking bad if I have to take medication. I'm not saying med- never mind. It's a whole controversial thing that I don't want to get into. Um, many people find adding a f pharmacological element to their treatment to be very helpful, and s some even prefer to take drugs completely, element eliminating their need to visit a therapist at all, providing you really providing you rely on your support network and and are still reaching out to people i would prefer it if we kept talking should you choose to start medication so that i can monitor your progress and adjust as needed but the choice is ultimately yours i just wanted to run the option by you to gauge what what your thoughts on the matter might be dr mel's dr mel has just given you a lot of to think about what do you do accept a prescription as a way uh, to augment your therapy tell her you'd like to try drugs instead of therapy these weekly sessions have always made you more than a little uncomfortable the thought of messing uh, with your brain chemicals makes you uneasy you'll stick with therapy this whole therapy thing who the fuck knows? Um, this whole therapy thing has always overwhelmed you, and this is the final straw. You're done with both. Also, I gotta um, say that uh, people are asleep. That's why um, I'm really close to the mic and you can, can hear me um, do anything with my mouth because it's currently 1.19 a.m. And on a Thursday? Yeah, Thursday morning. About to go to sleep. But before that, I have to get some video, a video done, um, because um, my upload speeds here are not great, so I'm going to pre-record this, um, because uh, like I just said, my upload speeds are not great. It's currently taking me to upload like a 15 to 30 minute video, um, about an hour, so yeah, except a prescription as a way to judge, augment your therapy. I'm gonna choose this because I hope that uh, while well, taking medication, it'll not just help me with my um, depression, but it'll also help me with my uncomfortableness when talking to people, because that would be really cool. Okay, you think the matter of long and hard. You think the matter over long and hard. It's strange to think that recently none of the this sort of thing was even on your radar. And you hear you, and here you are now being asked to make a decision about it. You're both skepti skeptical and nervous, still getting over the initial shock of just, of even just talking to the to a therapist. Still, over the years, you've done enough entry level reading on the subject to know that if 
it doesn't help at least it's probably at least it probably won't hurt right um i need to take a drink of water my every time i start reading one of these even though i'm not sick currently anymore um my throat just gives out because reading a lot like this is just gonna kill me okay let's continue after an intense and protected period of interval internal vacillation vacillation you decide to bite the bullet and go for it you tell dr mel that you'd like to try medication in addition to your therapy and you spend about half an hour going over what you'll be taking and what you should expect from it thinking back on the decision later you pr you're pretty sure you had your fists tightly clenched the whole way through well doesn't sound like i'm too happy with my decision but whatever nice steak i like steak GPU, can you just shut up right now? Thank you. It actually worked. I'm surprised. Um, yeah, let's continue. It's a Wednesday evening. Wow, really? I'm only 13 minutes in. Okay. It's a Wednesday evening. Well, actually 12. Not 13. Uh, because I spent a minute um, setting things up and everything was recording still. Um, it's a Wednesday evening and you're visiting at your parents' house for a holiday. It's one of uh, the handful of times the year during the year you drive out to visit your old hometown and you've seen seen random people you had gone to school with around the town. Whenever bumping into them, the usual short version of what you've done since graduation are exchanged. You, you've gone through a few of these today and you've been very aware of how much you feel you haven't accomplished when you are when you were in high school you had much larger plans and you feel like you failed to manifest most of them even if you had managed to you you've largely lost interest in what you thought you wanted to do growing up now you're not really sure what you want to do and and you felt like you're uh, with you, f uh, you felt like you're lacking the ambition to drive or drive to figure it out, figure it out. Everyone you, everyone you've caught up with seems so much happier than you. Well, that's because you're depressed, boy. Also, just give me a second and do adjust stuff. I don't know if this w looks weird, but uh, I just made it full screen because it's kind of hard for me to read what was on screen. So yeah, um, where where am I? Um, okay, like they've got their lives all figured out, and you've kind of been feeling like a failure by comparison. Your brother Malcolm arrives with his wife in tow shortly before you all sit down for to dinner. He's been traveling for his job lately, and you haven't seen him since the day he picked you up from the dentist. Your parents haven't seen him since then, before then. During dinner, they all catch up, and Malcolm talks about how amazing things, are, thing, things he's done on the road. Your mother turns to you and asks, "What, what have you been up? What have you been up to since we've?" You've la seen them last. Oh, same old, same old. You say. Nothing really new going on. Your mother f makes a face. Oh, nothing new? How long are you planning to on staying at that job of yours? Shut up! Jesus. Thank you. Um, what do you say? Why well, tell them what they want to hear, that you've, you're actively looking for more, for a more prestigious prestigious position admit that you don't want uh you don't know what to do what you want to do excuse yourself to the bathroom oh fuck tell them about the exciting new job you're gunning for 
You can hear that. I swear to God, I didn't fart. Um, cut it. Cut it. Cut it all out. Um, admit that you don't want or don't know what you want to do. That's what I'm going to click. Because, I don't know, I just relate to that a lot. Nice food. Um, actually, you start sheepishly. I'm not really sure what I want to do right now. Your mom puts down her fork. So what? You're planning on living the way you do for the rest of your life? How would you afford a house on that paycheck? What about kids? Your father interrupts, light lightly placing his hand over your mother's. It's okay, Linda. Let the kid, let the kids be what they are. There's nothing wrong with not knowing what you want to do in your twenties. I don't get into uh, construction until I was. I didn't get. I didn't get into construction until I was nearly forty. Jesus, that's how old my dad is. Um, I don't know where my fucking phone is. Though. It keeps going off like fucking crazy. Um. Your mother looks across the table at you, unsatisfied with her husband's reasoning. I don't think it's normal for someone at your age to not have a path. You need to think hard about it or you'll never make anything of yourself. You, mom, come on, Malcolm interjects. Wow, fucking starting the riot at my table. This emotionally exhausts you. You want to tell her that you're that you are thinking hard and that not knowing what you what you're doing with yourself bothers you more than it I thought it said brothers for a second bothers you more than it could ever bother her that, that sometimes it feels uh, like you're lost in the woods and that if and that if you were to drop dead in the in your apartment the world wouldn't notice you want to make her understand that more often than not you feel like an alien like there isn't any way in the world that feels like a place where you belong and you feel no idea and you have no idea how to fix it or what to do you wish you could find the words to so she would understand that being looked down on uh, for this kills you and drives home the feeling of being a total outsider instead you get very quiet for the rest of the meal while your mind goes numb everything inside inside you feels exhausted fuck more water it's the only way I can cope with this Okay, let's continue, shall we? Next! <coughs> what is that? What the fuck is that? Whatever. Sounds like people aren't asleep. It's... Craft stuff, you can just shut. Thank you. Um, it's a rainy night. You are hurrying through the rain to Alex's apartment at her best behest. I, I don't know. Though your pace is quick, the rain isn't is steadily soaking up your pant legs as you traverse the town. And it's darkening. You're already poor mood. <clears throat> Just syrup in my mouth a little bit. <clears throat> Jesus. Ugh. The taste. Um The call came while you were at home after a day of dealing with abnormally frustrating people. You'd spent the afternoon trying to unwind and get some work done on your project. Uh, Alex called and interrupted one of your try to make progress, get frustrated at not making progress, have a harder time making progress due to frustration, repeat loops and uh, loops, repeat loops, and you haven't fully shaken off the feeling of being annoyed with yourself from it yet. Uh, okay. Not come down a little bit. So far. 
You knock on her door, and on the third knock, you hear her voice call from further in the apartment to come on in. As you cross the threshold, dripping rainwater all the way, you notice that the lights are turned down very low in the apartment. You squint to navigate it as you clutch on your damp umbrella, but end up hitting your shin on the on a side table, mumbling or a profanity under your breath. Fuck! Like that? You barely make out Alex emerging from the hallway, clad in what looks to be a robe with the bare skin of her legs peering on out underneath. Why don't you come in and warm up? She asks in she asks in her designated slightly cheesy sexy voice. After a beat of silence she states more naturally, My roommates are out of town this weekend, so I thought it might be a it might be nice to have a little fun while they're away. You appreciate her affection, but you're so wrapped up in your own navigative feedback loops to be in the mood right now. What do you do? Try to unwind with her before getting physical. Suggest you do something else instead. Tell her you're not in the mood. Let go of your stress and be intimate with her, with your girlfriend. Ah, <sighs> shit. Uh, better try to get sex than not try at all. Um, you look at her standing, barely lit. And notice there's, hey, let's get fucking lit, bro. Oh, shit. And notice that uh, there's a few candles scattered around the apartment. It occurs to you that she has tried to make this night special for two for the two of you. Even though you have a tight knot of antisocial frustration in your stomach, seeing how much she cares makes you want to try melt, try to melt it away so you can show her how much you care and that. She, She's gone through all this trouble. However, you desperately need to sh shift gears before, or first before this, that's even possible. You look amazing. Let's have a drink together. You suggest hoping that this will give you the push you need to get in the mood. You go into the kitchen and pour the two of you drinks, trying to focus on letting go of your bad mood. Um, you sit down on the couch next to her and she cuddles up to you insistently. What should we toast to, she asks as she takes her drink. You think for a moment, passing up a cheesy to us option. You say what's on your mind letting go of your bad day tonight. Uh, the two of you ch ten to tonight. The two of you cheers and you ask her about her day. Conversation turns flirtatious. And the two of you find yourselves in the bedroom shortly after. You find that you're having trouble getting into things, fit, into things physically with her. And remember that diminished, diminished arousal was a possible side effect of your med medication. You'd hope that you were part of the population that wouldn't be affected by it, but it seems as though this was not the case. However, you you're able to still enjoy the closeness with Alex and fall asleep t happy, together happy happily next sharp pencils what are we gonna do draw some naked I mean never mind um, it's an early winter evening and even though it's not particularly late the time of, of year has lent the sky an almost permanent permanently darkened cast Day after day, just like today, you trudge home from a job you have increasingly come to hate. On this day, your job misery, misery, your job misery seems to have reached critical mass, and not even shading your rain leaden and uncomfortable work clothes helps you to unwind with from your work day. Oh man. You collapse in, in your into your couch, blank and numb, while your job always seems to just be an unpleasant, <sighs> unpleasant reality of existence. It was a position you sh sh sort of fell into unexpectedly. 
never intending to work there long term and it's getting harder and harder to keep it up. Well, it's certainly not your dream job, you've always just sort of stuck it out out of necessarily necessity before. Uh, but it's becoming increasingly difficult to do that. Though you couldn't even uh, begin to imagine what else you could do, you find yourself face to face with a question you just can't ignore. It's your complacency. Uh, com com complacency. Whoa, fuck! Worth the price of this level of misery. What do you do? Try and at least be productive by focusing your efforts on your project tonight. Aimlessly look through class. Uh, classif classified classifieds I don't know for another job turn on the TV and let your mind go blank this is the one I'd probably pick if it was me because you know I'm a lazy poor bastard but no Jesus um, try to focus on your project oh wait i forgot that fucks you up okay you sit down at your computer to blow off some steam but at but are surprised to find that your thoughts drift to your long-term neglected project you talk yourself into opening it up and taking a look for the first time in what must be weeks well for whatever reason your anger that you've been feeling toward your day job seems to have converted to pure passion. Pure passion, really? As you seem to be overflowing with ideas tonight, it it's as if you've got a buildup of ideas and ideas that just haven't gotten out and now you're in the zone. While you don't get a unnatural amount of work done, you do work for a solid couple of hours and it's really f and it really feels great what's more and what's more you share some stuff across your social media networks and receive quite a bit of positive feedback which makes you feel great that's good more water oh it's not soothing my throat but whatever um when you go when you go top bed that night when you go to bed i'm guessing that's a typo when you go to bed that night you tell yourself that your job may suck but at least you've got something you really care about that you can't put all, uh effort into and feel really good about yourself in fact as you're falling asleep you can barely even remember your work day. Ah, uh, well, shit. And that's a thumbnail. It's gotta be. No, can't do that. Oh shit. Um, what the fuck? Okay. Okay, that's the thumbnail no question um it's a late it's a little past 8 p.m on a tuesday night 
You're at your computer. Frustration levels peaked. Uh, rubbing your eyes and uh, sighing heavily. <clears throat> uh, you're working on a project from your job that has you stretched to the wit to wits and and trying to meet a looming deadline. And as it lurks closer and closer, you are seriously doubting your ability to get it done. You've dragged your feet a little at work due to uh, your complete lack of energy lately. In spite of wanting to do a good job, you find yourself unable to push past it um, and feel horribly uh, useless for it. It's burning. Um, whatever. You slide your hands off your face to look at your screen as it beeps at you. Hey, are you there? I really need to talk to someone about about something. Uh, you feel like you're uh, getting somewhere with your current task and could probably use a break. However, you know that you have a history of getting distracted and then losing motivation to pick something back up again afterwards. What do you do? Multitask, tell Attic you're busy. Try to regain your focus. Don't answer. Um, answer Attic. Let's answer him. Hugs Bonson? Uh, oh, is that the picture of what my name is and me talking to him? That's good. Um, you're feeling like you've hit a brick wall with your task so why not take a break and help out a friend hey what's up oh good you're there um i just found out i got cheated on i don't know what to do oh that's horrible the two of you talk for a, a long time and you lead a shoulder to your you lend a shoulder to your friend you give him some space to rant to cry and most importantly to be able to voice his inner turmoil Hey, that's a game I might play. Turmoil. Um, you give him your full attention and talk him through what his options are for what he does next. You keep him from doing something rash. And the two of you decide it's best for him to sleep on it before doing anything. Exhausted, he departs for bed and thanks you for doing there, for being there to talk with him. Um, as you close the I am window, instant messaging window, you feel horrible, horribly sorry for your friend, but happy that you were able to help it help. It serves a as a tang tangible reminder to you that you're capable of being six un uh, being useful to someone instead of solely being a mass that needs everyone else's help. You boot up your work project and find that you're suddenly able to get some solid progress done on it that night. That's good. This is gonna be the last page. Um, I'm sorry, but my throat is just killing me and I can't do it much longer. It's a sunny Saturday afternoon. You're in deep thought on the way home from therapy. However, you notice that uh, you notice this time that you're not in the same negative feedback loops you usually get trapped in when being in introspective. Um, being this introspective, you realize that although you still have your bad days, your lows aren't quite as low as they used to be. Your antidepressant bottle rolls across your dashboard. At as you take a left turn you've been on this medication for quite a while now after a period of trying a few different kinds though you still have minor side effects they've overall became an unnoticed part of your life you feel as if your life has generally changed for the better recently and you begin to wonder if they if you need them anymore you don't feel as much despair or hopelessness 
and you hate yourself a lot less these days. Maybe it's time to stop taking these, you think. I seem to not really need them anymore. What do you do? Well, me, I've been off my meds for about a month, two months now. But that, that, that's not the way. Also, my little like, my little um, messaging, what's the fuck? Little messaging icon down here uh, that uh, tells me, wait, what does this do? I don't know. Um, that tells me stuff, like if I pull it up, see, Facebook just installed, me yeah, see, um, that kind of looks like the Twitch TV thing, um, but whatever, but I wouldn't recommend going off your meds, because I, I take, um, uh, migraine prevention medicine, because I get really bad migraines, and since I've been doing that, my migration, my migraines have been getting worse and more often, so I think if you go off your medication, if you've been taking them for such a long time, you'll your um, body will re rely on them um, to get uh, to not be that bad. So I'm gonna take continue to take your med. Yeah. Um. Whatever. This is a short thing, so I guess I'll read it. You have the realization that you can't be sure if it's a general life change that's making you feel better, or if it's just a sign that the medication is working you decide against discounting your meds it's not really a lesson you'd like to learn the hard way and the side effects of this particular kind of neg negligible the next time you see your doctor you you see your see dr mel you tell her about this she informs you that this is a common train of thought that people who have begun using medication to help them manage their depression experience and that you've managed to dodge a bullet because it generally ends poorly. She also asks you to talk to you, her first before making any decision about your medication in the future. Okay. Okay, maybe one more page, okay. Oh, Jesus. Okay, yeah, last page. Well, not last page for the, uh, whatever, you know what I mean. It's yet another sleepless Thursday night. You're at Alex's apartment, wide awake in bed as she's sleeping peacefully beside you. She fall, fell asleep hours ago, and you've been laying here unable to shut your brain up long enough to fall asleep. You've added the feelings of insecurity about your relationship to the rest of the noise in your head keeping you up tonight. It was kind of ten, a tense night between you two, the two of you. Uh, you arrived after a stressful day at work and as you made dinner t together you barely said a word you s you were stuck in your own head and had a hard time really being present with her as you as your thoughts turned on uh, turned to all of the ways you feel like you're def deficient at being a good person and beating yourself up mentally for each one um, she told you she could tell you were in one of your moods and said that she wouldn't push you to push you but miss miss talking to you as the two of you uh, sat on the couch together you wanted to tell her how much you love her but you couldn't make the words come out outright and ended up sounding defensive instead as you lay there uh, next to her you trace your her your fingers across her arm just slightly enough to not wake her you still haven't explained your depression to her well, fuck what um or how you've started seeing a therapist or that you've been taking medication and it's starting to feel more and more like a secret you're keeping it's impacting your relationship with her and you feel guilty about this however you're also terrified that if she knew exactly how fucked up you are, uh, that she would leave you. You are already worried that she's only with you because she doesn't realize how terrible of a person you are yet, and you're afraid that this would keep uh, would be the final thing to expose you. Ooh, damn! Expose. She strikes. Uh, she stirs in her sleep and squints as she opens her eyes with the confusion of. Uh, that comes with waking she asks you if you're awake and then if you think everything's okay we're all out of time for this episode not just that but my throat is fucking killing me so leave a like for that i'm just kidding 
Um, leave in the comments what I what I should do because like my my fucking throat is killing me, and I want to know how to not have my throat kill me while I'm reading these things because you know it's kind of kind of hurts. But um, leave a like if you want to see some more of this uh, game. I don't know what it's called or what it's supposed to be, but yeah, leave a like if you want to see some more of this. Um, leave a dislike if you don't want to see any more of this, and um, subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Go down in the description below. It has all my links to all my social media. This game, the fuck, this transcript or whatever you want to call it, um, thing on Steam. It also has collaborations and all that. Um, so yeah, and um, go down below to where you see the subscribe thing. And click that bell so you know, always know when I'm uh, when I've posted. But you guys should know already that I post every. I try to post every day at 9 a.m. I'm trying to do my outro over here. So yeah, um, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.